everyone! In this video, I'm going to talk about a common way of thinking about second degree price discrimination, and that is as menu pricing. So I will say that the literature on this stuff is really, really big. And so this video is really just an introduction. I hope to do more videos that get into the details in the future. So as per usual, I'll link to any related videos in the description. You can also check my playlist on my channel on price discrimination. All right, so second degree price discrimination, when we talk about it as menu pricing, is a strategy that a firm will employ when it wants to price discriminate. So the firm knows that there are different sorts of consumers in their market, and that means that there's the potential to get more profit by discriminating between these types of customer, but the firm can't directly identify which group a particular customer belongs to. So for instance, if I had a shop, when my customers walk into the shop, I can't tell what sort of customer they are, but I know that my customers come in different types and I would like to discriminate between them on that basis. And let's for the sake of illustration, say that this customer here has a high demand for the product, so they would like to buy a lot of the product. And this guy here has a low demand for the product, so they're not so keen on the product. Now what the firm can do in this situation is offer a menu of options to our customers with different options designed for each customer type. The goal when creating this menu of options is to get that high demand customer to choose the option designed for them. And this menu option will take advantage of that high demand. So the customer will end up spending more overall and the low demand customer will choose the option that's designed for them. This option will not be as expensive, so they'll spend less than the high demand consumer, but they'll still engage in the market in a way that brings the firm profit. Now in the literature, there are two broad strategies that are often discussed on how a firm might construct their menu. The first strategy is when the firm offers a menu that includes different price quantity combinations. The second strategy is when the firm offers a menu that includes different price quality combinations. And one way of understanding that first type, offering different price quantity combinations, is that the firm is going to take advantage of the fact that the marginal benefit of consumption, that's MB, decreases, diminishes, as our consumer consumes more. And just to review, this is why we have a downward sloping demand curve. As we consume more, our willingness to pay for each marginal unit gets lower and lower because our marginal benefit of consumption diminishes. And this basically means that in order to incentivize the consumer to buy more, the firm will have to lower their price. Basically then, we offer different options to our customers where if the customer buys more, they get a per unit discount. So in these cases, those with a high demand for the product will be incentivized to buy more and exhaust more of that high demand, whilst those who have a low demand will just stick to that per unit higher price. So in our example, let's say we offer on our menu each unit for $3 each, or if you buy four units, you get the whole bundle for $10. That's essentially getting a discounted per unit price, $2.50 per unit. The person with the low demand for the product who doesn't have the demand for four units, will never want to buy four units, will choose the first option. So they buy their units for $3 each. A high demand consumer will pay $10 for four. That bulk discount has meant that the high demand consumer has an incentive to buy more. The creation of the menu then has meant that our firm can separate out our two types of consumer in a way that's beneficial for the firm. Our consumers self-select into different menu options and in this way, our customers are revealing what type of customer that they are in their choice. So the firm solves the problem of not knowing which customer is of which type through the creation of the menu. Now, quantity price menus are very often associated with these bulk buying scenarios. And in these cases, the low demand consumer is perhaps a singleton living alone and only cooking or providing for one. The high demand customer is perhaps a mum or a dad with a big family and kids, so has a higher demand for the product and will buy more if the per unit price is just a bit lower. Another way to offer quantity discounts similar to this is through what we call block pricing. So let's say we have a demand curve like this. If the firm block prices, they price along the curve, charging different prices 
for different quantity blocks. So just in our example here, say we want to separate our demand curve into different blocks. And let's say for the first two units, we're going to charge, well, we read off the demand curve a fairly high price, that's $8. Now we can incentivize those with the demand for it to consume uh, the third and fourth units, but we need to give them a bit of a discount. Let's read off our demand curve. We can charge these as $6 per unit. Again, if our customer is willing, if they have the demand for it, we can get them to consume even more, that fifth and sixth unit, by lowering the price for those units, reading off our demand curve, $4 per unit. And I think at least around where I am, I sometimes see this sort of thing in paid parking lots. So the longer that I stay, the less each additional hour or time unit costs me. I also see it sometimes in electricity or other utility plans where say for the first 400 kilowatts, the kilowatt per hour charge is 60 cents. Uh, from the 401st to the 600th, it's charged at 55 cents, etc., etc. So for those with the demand for it, the firm is potentially capturing more surplus and profit by pricing along the demand curve, decreasing the price for higher blocks and giving those guys with the higher demand an incentive to consume more. For those customers who don't have such a high demand, they just won't buy as much product. So you get that same self-selection outcome where different sorts of customers are choosing different options from the menu offered. And that's two types of kind of quantity discounts, bulk buying and block pricing. There are some other different types in the literature. I won't cover them here. They're a little bit more idiosyncratic. I think they, those are the main ones. The second type of second degree price discrimination is, as menu pricing that I wanted to talk about was when the firm op offers a menu that differs in terms of price quality combinations. And in this sort of strategy, the firm will take the option targeted to the low demand consumer, uh, and that's the cheaper option, and they will make it unattractive in various ways to the high demand consumer, so to try to prevent that high demand consumer from choosing that option. Whilst the option that they design for the high demand consumer, uh, they'll make it attractive in various ways to that high demand consumer. So just as an example, Hal Varian, who wrote a standard intermediate textbook called Intermediate Economics, has a really nice discussion on quality differences in air flying tickets. So I'll reference Varian below just in case you're interested. But just to explain, let's think about the types of tickets uh, that we can sell if we want to fly from destination A to destination B. And on one hand, we might have a sort of ticket that involves lots of inconveniences. So long lines, long stopovers at inconvenient stopover times. In this kind of package, your seat is small and crowded and you lose the option to cancel your ticket at short notice without penalty. The second sort of package that the customer gets will be of a higher quality deal. So perhaps you can skip ahead of the lines. Maybe there are short stopovers at convenient times. The seat has a little bit more room. You can cancel at short notice. And in addition, I haven't written it down here, but you know, you get little perks like the flight attendants remember your name or offer you snacks and drinks kind of on demand whenever you like. So the first package would be targeted towards the customer with a low demand. So this would be an economy fare and would be fairly cheap. The second package would be targeted towards the consumer with a high demand. So this would be like a first class or business class ticket, and it would be relatively more expensive. Now, this example is a bit different from our quantity discounts in that the groups that we're discriminating between are those who have a high willingness to pay, so they have a pretty high income, or perhaps the business that they're working for is paying for the tickets. So those sort of customers will go for the business class or first class tickets versus those who, the rest of us who have a lower income, which is, I think is most people. So we're not discriminating between singletons and families like we were before, but we've still got kind of two different sorts of types of customers uh, in our market. And whilst there are some factors here that complicate the designation of this as second degree price discrimination, you know, they aren't exactly the same product. The marginal cost of producing business or first class is higher than the marginal cost of producing economy. And we really should expect some price difference just based on that fact, right? Despite that, it does seem like the spirit of second degree price discrimination is here. The airline has different types of consumers. It doesn't know how to distinguish between them just by looking at them. It offers different packages and the consumers self-select into those packages.
And it is worth noting that the price differences of these tickets are very different on average. So on one website, I found business class tickets are four times the price of economy on average. That's a massive difference. That's more than just covering an additional cost of, of a little bit more leg room, right? That's definitely segmenting the market into different consumer, consumer types. So that's just really one example of, of a quality price menu. I hope it helped you get the gist of it. And that's really overall a very brief overview of second degree price discrimination as menu pricing. As I mentioned in the introduction, there are heaps of extension topics here that I haven't gone through and more advanced textbooks can get really technical. So I hope to cover some of that stuff in the future. But I do hope this video gave a good overview discussion on menu pricing. If the video helped, please like and subscribe. I hope you guys are keeping well. Thanks so much for watching.